Data governance is the subject of intense debate in advanced economies and increasingly among large emerging markets, and yet many complex policy questions remain unanswered. That are a double-edged sword. On the one hand, they offer tremendous potential to create value by improving programs and policies, driving economies and empowering citizens. On the other hand, data accumulation can lead to a concentration of economic and political power, raising the possibility that data may be misused in ways that harm citizens. The World Bank holds a hybrid workshop at the Sadawda Karabajara Conference Center on Wednesday. The workshop is part of a series of national events designed to raise awareness of the World Bank Report 2021 policy messages in the Western and Central Africa and to improve dialogue with national policymakers and stakeholders of the data ecosystem. And today's workshop is our effort to raise awareness of the key messages from this report at the country level and to promote the dialogue with the national policymakers and also the stakeholders like you on the, on the data ecosystem. The World Development Report 2021, Data for Better Lives, explores the tremendous potential of the skanking data landscape to improve the lives of poor people, while also acknowledging its potential to open back doors that can harm individuals, businesses and societies. To address this tension between the helpful and harmful potential of data, this report calls for a new social contract that enables the use and reuse of data to create economic and social value, ensures equitable access to that value, and foster trust that data will not be misused in harmful ways. We have now cyber crimes all over, and a case in point, even in the Gambia, is some attempted attacks on our central bank this year by potential hackers or whatever they call themselves. But intention is also uh, for causing harm. Now, we then go on to the flip side of the coin, which is for good purposes. I've just cited that Policy making will require evidence-based uh, information so that uh, you can make coherent and consistent policies that are backed by data. The workshop also seeks to support national key stakeholders to react to themes that are occurring the opportunities and challenges of the country with the Data for Better Lives agenda and to exchange on in-country operationalization. Also at the opening of the workshop is the Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Public Administration, Patel Ja. He said, reliable data offer great opportunities to improve the socio-economic well-being of nations by improving policy planning, implementation, empowering citizens, and promoting social inclusion. Reliable data facilitate the development of policies that improve health, education, economic growth, and ensure that services design are tailor-made to the people's need. If I may say it differently, one thing is certain, such a responsive and sustainable development cannot happen in the absence of data. We must have basis for policies or programs we deliver as government or development actors. And this must be anchored on data. However, data in its raw form cannot solve problems. Development actors are required to transform data into useful information to address development challenges. The Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Osman Bas, says data development is not just about numbers and statistics, but about people, individuals, families and communities whose lives are influenced by it. Data can give voice to, to voiceless and sign a light to inequality, disparity and injustice. Yet despite the numerous potential data, for development is not always readily available or accessible to those who need it the most. The World Bank stands ready to support its client countries on this important and challenging agenda. 
The findings of this World Development Report will save support for clean countries by identifying where public and private sector investments are the most critical, defining a rich program for policy reform and technical assistance, and highlighting areas in which global initiatives can help to convey and facilitate cross-border cooperation. From the Sadawda Karabajara Conference Center, the World Bank officials embarked on a side visit to various sites in the Gambia. The team led by the World Bank Country Director, Keiko Miwa, first visited the Gambia College, where they supported the school with laboratory materials. To improve the quality and utilization of essential health service in the Gambia, the World Bank is currently helping the Ministry of Health with the construction of a new medical emergency complex. From the Gambia College, the visiting team proceeded to under construction medical emergency complex in Farato. This afternoon, I went to visit the the, the Gambia College, uh, where they train the teachers, the future of the country. And now I'm here at the construction site for the new medical emergency uh, complex, which also has a medical waste uh, center. So that's where we are visiting. Investing in human capital in education and health is probably one of the best uh, investments that the World Bank can make and that any country can make. It is very impressive. Uh, this is going to be a st state-of-the-art uh, emergency treatment center uh, for the people of this country. Uh, we are able to do this with the support from the World Bank. Uh, so this is a phenomenal uh, project uh, and a lot of progress for the people of this country. From Farato, the delegation proceeded to visit the OMVG project sites, which is aided by the World Bank. The bank's support of the OMVG interconnection project will help countries in West Africa to change the energy mix away from thermal generation by connecting them to more sustainable and cost-effective energy resources. Reporting for Kerfatu, I am Buba Gajigo.